Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. My name is Coach Scott. I'll be your host today. It is Thursday, July 16th. We are moving our way through July. Love to see it. Uh, You know, it's weird because on the one hand, you just want summer to last forever, right? Don't we always just want summer to last forever? It's been a hot one, too. It's been a scorcher here, too. But uh, this year, I don't know. I just want 2020. I want 2020 to be gone, you know. So we're midway through July. Let's just work our way through this year uh, and then pick up the pieces when we're done. I I will say this, though. We have had a very good week at Ordinary Marathoner. We've had a really, really good week. Uh, A lot of good things going on. It does give me hope. Uh, when When I talk to other people and I deal with other people within our community, It always gives me hope. It gives me, uh, you guys are definitely uh, an an inspiration, really. And it started, I guess, on Thursday night. Last week, we did our Zwift ride. We had a blast. Um, 6.30 p.m. It's really 6.35 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, We we stream it over at our YouTube channel, Ordinary Marathoner. Check that out. And we've been doing trivia for the last three or four months now. And music trivia, movie trivia. We're going to be doing movie trivia again tonight. So if you want to join the ride, if you're on Zwift, you want to join the ride, follow me. Uh, Let me know to add you to the ride, and I will. I'll just add you um, and invite you, and and you can come join us. There was about, I don't know, maybe about a dozen people last week. And uh, we had a blast. Check out that YouTube stream. It was really cool. And then we did, on Friday night, we did our happy hour with Allison Knott, our team dietitian from A New Well Sports Nutrition. And, uh, and she was awesome. We had a, you know, it was a smallish crowd, but we had a, a really good discussion. It was really positive and productive. Uh, we talked about things like, I don't know, whether or not you should drink coffee in the morning before workouts, the things that you should eat before workouts, that you should eat after workouts. We talked about uh, how to shop. And, you know, that could be actually a topic uh, in and of itself. How to shop when you're at the grocery store, what aisles to avoid, what aisles not to avoid, that kind of thing. And uh, really some really good information from Allison and uh, and if you can check that out that so we, we did that on Zoom we recorded it and that is now on the YouTube channel as well and then the the third thing that was great we did finally finally I was able to finish the uh, the, the slideshow from the Ordinary Marathon this year so that was our our ten day virtual race it took place in May you guys sent me hundreds of pictures hundreds and it, was, it took a, it took a few weeks to get through it all but I really I I really worked hard on it this past week and a half. And, uh, you know, I get hundreds of pictures and I try to, some of you guys send me like 50, 60, 70 pictures. Some of you guys send me like two. So I wanted to make sure that everyone who sent me a picture was represented in the slideshow. I hope I got you all. I am sorry if I missed pictures. Uh, it, it was, it's hard, you know, it's like a two and a half minute slideshow and I'm trying to jam it all in there. Cause you can't make it a five minute slideshow. It'll just take forever. No one will watch it. But, uh, I think it, it was, pro- it was my favorite one. Of all the three years that we've done this race, this slideshow, I, I put my heart and soul into it, and it came out really good. Check it out on the YouTube channel. Uh, hit that subscribe button over on the YouTube channel as well. So, you know, go on over. Check out the Zwift ride if you like. Check out um, the happy hour with Allison Knott if you like. Uh, we, she's also, by the way, she's got a lot of new deals on her page. Uh, it's a new well, A-N-E-W-W-E-L-L dot C-O. And if you look at her new group packages, I think it's backslash join. Um, a lot of new deals, and you get a lot. Of, you get you get some uh, some discounts if you're a member of the Ordinary Marathoner um, team as well. So check that out if you get a chance. And uh, like I said, the video too was just awesome. But go and hit that subscribe button. We really use the subscribers. It really helps us out. We really appreciate it. Um, I had a client this week do a race, which is like, hey, hey, and and I'm not gonna say her name only because. You know, there's still, uh, I think there's a, just a sensitivity around racing and being in public. Um, and as much as I really want to celebrate this, it's kind of like one of those things where some people, you know, depending on where you live, it's like it's a little more intense, um, whether it be the regulation or whether it be just the, the, the disease itself and the impact it's had on the community. And some people are a little more sensitive than others. So, you know, it's like on the one hand, it's like you don't want to kind of start a fire and start arguments where, where it doesn't have to be. Uh, but on the other hand, the one thing I've really, really missed this year is watching someone work super hard and then accomplishing something that they that they never thought that they could do, things that they never thought they could do in the past. And my client this weekend did just, just amazing. I'm so proud of her. Uh, she went into this race and she dealt with, immediately dealt with some adversity that she was not predicting. Um, but she picked up the pieces 
and she toughed it out. And man, it just watching her accomplish this is just such a proud moment as a coach. And it's one of those things that I really just want to, I, I would love to just shout from the rafters and just experience this with you guys. Our sport is kind of like, you know, I, I said a couple podcasts ago, I just want my sport back. Um, and this is the reason why. This is the things that we miss out. This is the good stuff that we miss out on. Um, you know, while we sit home and we sit on our treadmills and go out for a run by ourselves and all that stuff. This is the stuff that we miss. And it was nice for me to kind of experience that uh, with her and watch her accomplish this. It was just, it was wonderful. It was a breath of fresh air. Um, that being said, on the flip side of that, you know, so like I said, a lot of good things, a lot of good things, a lot of, a lot of reason to be optimistic with just right there about, about our group, about our team, about our, our you know, um, about people working hard and accomplishing things. On the flip side of that, it was announced this past week that Philadelphia Marathon is canceled. And, and that's, it's disappointing. It's disappointing. And again, it, I, you know, I don't want to talk about it. Just say it's disappointing. Can we just be disappointed without being criticized for being disappointed? Um, and look, in prior podcasts, I've said, I expect this race to get canceled. I mean, Philadelphia Marathon, big city race, a lot of people, they're going to follow in the footsteps of Boston, New York. And once Boston, New York canceled, you knew Philly would be next. And it was. And I got to admit, but still, I, you know, I expected it, but I still was training for it. And I knew in the back of my head, I knew it wasn't going to happen, but it's silly not to train for something. And then what do you know? Next thing you know, uh, who knows? There's a vaccine next week and we're all good and all the, everything's reinstated and, and we're doing a marathon in November. Who knows? You just don't know what's going to happen from day to day with this thing. So uh, when they, but still when they canceled, even though I knew they were going to cancel, it still was a little bit of a gut punch. It still was. My training had been on point the last, I don't know, month and a half, two months. Um, my midweek training was really solid. My weekends, I, I've come up short on a couple long runs, even though I'm only doing like eight and nine miles. Um, yeah, I, just from doing them on the treadmill, I don't know. It just they were they weren't they weren't perfect. Let's just say they were. It's not like I missed them. It's not like I ran two miles and then and then called it quits. I got you know five six miles in uh, and and lost it. But anyway, it's all part of the training. My training in general was moving well. I was not upset with my training. It felt good. And that's why, even though I knew it was going to happen, when it actually did happen, it didn't feel good. And I hope you can appreciate that. And I know for a lot of people, that was the same way. I got messages. We had a, a, lo a lot of the group was going to Philadelphia this year as our meetup. We met, a lot of us met at MCM last year, Marine Corps Marathon, and we just wanted to do it again. And then, you know what? In a way, I think you got you to kind of respect that because, you know, we're not like a local running group. Team Ordinary is not a local running group. The discussion group is not, we're not a local, you know, everyone meet up on Wednesday night and then we all go out and run our paces and then go home for the night or we meet at the bar and have a drink or whatever it is. We're not that. We are, uh, we're, di we're diverse. We're all over the place. We're geographically diverse. We're from different places. We have different backgrounds and it's great that way. It's a, it's a great team for that reason. Um, We like having that diversity amongst um, from geographically, uh, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, we like it. The problem is we don't get a chance to go hang out on, on Tuesday nights or Wednesday night and go for a run. We don't get to do our long runs together. We don't, we just share online. Right. So when we actually met last year at Marine Corps marathon, it was a really special time. We had, uh, we got a lot of people together. Um, some of you guys ran together. Some of you guys, uh, I remember Aura and Chantel, uh, got together and they had never met before and they ran that whole entire race together, a whole entire thing. Um, and I believe that was both for both of them. I think that was their first marathons. Uh, and what a great, what a great story that is, you know, just people coming together from different areas of the country meeting and then going out and accomplish something for the first time. Great story. And that's not going to happen this year. And it's upsetting. Uh, I think it was a little bit upsetting for all of us, even though we knew it was going to happen. It was a little bit upsetting for all of us. And so the question then becomes, how do you then replace this giant goal that you had that you were, you know, for some people, they've been working really hard. For some people, they kind of written, had written it off. Um, I think, you know, again, I, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, the mental toughness it takes to be in this sport and to train and have the discipline to run a marathon and train for a marathon and be ready for it. I think it gives us an advantage because it makes you, knowing that you're mentally tough to start out with, 
Uh, and then when you get this, and, and look, it sounds like maybe we're just a little bit of a, you know, it's almost like we're crybabies. You say, oh, my race got canceled. But, you know, it's tough. You work hard for this stuff. You work hard for this stuff and you plan this stuff. And then to throw in the planning to all go meet together, we were all looking forward to this. And uh, and now, you know, and we knew it might get canceled and now it got canceled. And now we're like, what do we do now? And I tell you, in talking to certain people, everyone's got their own plan. And I think that's good because we all deal with this. We all deal with this adversity a little bit differently. Um, I know some racers, some people who weren't even going to Philly who were like, oh, you know what? Um, some of these big races are now having uh, virtual options. So I'm going to take a chance. You know, I've never done this marathon before. And yeah, it's not the same as being there, but it's super cheap. I can just do the virtual option. I get a medal. It sounds really cool. Uh, I'm not really like that, but I know people that are, and I think that's great. I know some people that were like, you know what? I need to, I need to replace this race now. I need to go find something that I need to train for in November uh, or right around that area and, and, and just set my goals somewhere else. So where can I find? And then we start looking looking for races and you know where to look, right? The States that haven't really been hit very hard, smaller races that aren't big city races that, you know, that are less likely to get canceled because people are, are massed in a group. Um, what do you call it? Uh, you know, the States that are more lenient, right? I mean, you know, the States that aren't going to lock down, you know, I wouldn't do a race in California, obviously not in Philly or New York um, and in, in Massachusetts, I, I wouldn't, you know, you know, the states that are like, you know, at the slightest hint of trouble, they're going to just, they're going to shut everything down. Not every state is like that. Good or bad. Doesn't have to be whatever, but it's, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be good or bad. You don't have to judge, but you know where to look if you want to find a race, you know, the states to go to. And so I have a client that's looking for a race and, and it intrigues me that it intrigues me, the opportunity, the thought of finding another race. Um, chances are I'll have to travel. You know, chances are I'll have to travel. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. I don't know if I really want to travel um, that far. I, Philly for me is a drive, right? But some of the states where I'm thinking of that there are going to be events happening, that's a flight. Um, and then there's always a chance that that race gets canceled. And I think in the back of my mind, the one thing that I'm thinking about is, you know, a lot of these races, when they cancel, they're not offering refunds. They're not offering outright refunds. What they're offering is deferrals. And usually it's just to next year. Marine Corps Marathon, different. Marine Corps Marathon, and this was smart, they let you defer towards one of the next three years. So you can defer to 2021, 2022, 2023. That's great. That's a great option to have. Not every not every race is offering that. So I, and I don't, to be honest, I didn't even read the email from Philly. I just saw it canceled and I kind of rolled my eyes and moved on. I don't know what my option is. My guess is that they're just going to say, they probably didn't even announce an option yet. They're probably thinking about it, but they're probably just going to roll our registration until next year. Got it. I didn't even get a hotel room this year. That's turned out to be smart. Um, but anyway, so if they defer me to next year in Philly and then say I sign up for this other race and that gets canceled and they defer me to next year. Now I've got two races in the same time, time frame. And look, that, that kind of thing is not impossible. I know plenty of people who run back-to-back marathons in, in subsequent weeks. That's fine. It's not my thing. For me, I, I really need to. I need my proper taper. I need my proper recovery. I don't want to risk any kind of injury as a coach. I wouldn't, unless that's your goal, unless that is your focused goal to do back-to-back marathons, uh, and then kind of deal with the fallout, the potential fallout after that of being injured. Um, you know, you can do it. It can be done. I've seen. I know plenty of people that have done it, but you kind of have to have the right approach for it, and uh, and you got to train for it the right way. I think. As a coach, that's what I would recommend. So if a, if an athlete came to me and said, hey, I want to do a marathon this week and then I want to do a marathon the next week. Well, is that something you really, really want to do? Or are you just doing it because it's available to you? Or do you really want to know my opinion? Because my opinion is you probably shouldn't do it. You should probably do one this year, one next year, or try to space it out. If you want to do it, you're going to have to do it and we're going to have to attack it with a specific plan. And it's not race, race one week and then race again the next week as hard as you can go because that's just a recipe for disaster. Um, and again, I know plenty of people who have done it and have plenty of people who survived it, but it's not optimal for me and it's not something I want to do. So why put myself in that position to have to deal potentially with two races in, uh, in subsequent weeks next year if I don't have to? And, and the answer might be, ready for the answer? The answer might be just wait until, you know, the week before the marathon that I'm eyeing up 
And then if, you know, train for it as if I'm going to go, which is hard to do. And then if it's still going, register for it last minute. And if I lose out and it gets, it gets sold out, then so be it. That might be an option. I don't know. Uh, but again, it's, everyone's going to have to deal with this stuff differently. There's no right answer. Um, and it's funny cause I do, I coach, I've coached a number of different athletes that, that have had their races canceled and everyone kind of approaches it differently. And there's no one cookie cutter approach that's right or wrong. It's how you feel and how, and how you're going to, what you think is the best course of action towards, um, eventually accomplishing your ultimate goal, whatever that goal may be to run a marathon, to do a 70.3 Ironman, do a full Ironman, um, whatever that goal to run a half marathon. Uh, whatever that goal may be within that within those frameworks, you just have to change the schedule. You have to change the approach to make it so that you're 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 advantaging yourself to accomplish those goals. They may not happen this year. You may have to wait, um, but there are ways to approach that. And you have to kind of you have to kind of adjust on the fly. And again, we're mentally tough people, so it's it's not it's not impossible. It's not impossible. I totally support you guys and everything that you're uh, you're going through whether it be my athlete or anyone listening to the podcast for that matter. I tell you, I, I, I'm upset and I'm upset because I'm not going to see my friends this year. And we've kind of thought, uh, we've thought of a few alternatives. Potentially we might, we might do a fall ordinary marathon. Potentially we may try to do a meetup where we just, some of us meet up and do like a half marathon on our own or even a 10 K and just some random park or something like that. I don't know. Um, we could do something like that. You know, just a very unofficial kind of couple people of you know meet up, and, and I encourage you know I see I see people, um, you know whose race gets canceled and they're like screw it and they just go out and they do the race anyway, uh, you know I've seen a there was a seventy point three that recently got canceled and people just showed up and they did the actual race anyway even though there were no buoys there was no support there was no aid stations the and and the, the streets were you know there was traffic in the streets all that stuff they went and did it anyway. Uh, it's hard to say I support that, but I get it. You know, it's hard to say that as a coach, as someone who's responsible for the safety of athletes. Yeah, it's hard to sort of say, oh, that's a great idea. Let's do it. Um, but if it's something like a half marathon, you're finding a nice safe venue um, and you're doing it in small groups. I don't think there's a problem with that. That's that's my opinion. And again, you can have your own opinion. That's fine. Um, we don't have to agree, guys. Why do I, where's this, when did it say we all had, I mean, this would Anyway, I got to move on. Anyway, I think that's all I got for today for you guys. Uh, I hope you've had a good week. Like I said, we've had a really great week here. And then that little hiccup at the end with the Philly Marathon getting canceled, um, it's thrown me a little bit off, but, uh, you know, I'm recovering. I'm recovering. I'm trying to get, uh, adjust the plan. You know, the funny thing is you want, I think as athletes, we want to have a plan. A lot of us, they, we need a plan. We need to have something that we're, we're working for. And when you don't have that plan, it's like, it's hard. It's difficult. It's hard to kind of, you want that rigidity. You want that, that schedule. And when you don't have it, it's like, what do I do now? How do I do this? How do I attack this? How do I, what's my approach? But don't rush it guys. Don't rush it. Nothing says you need that schedule. Take a deep breath. Find the path that's right for you. Um, if this was really disappointing that your races get canceled and you're having trouble coping and be careful with what you schedule next, be careful because that can get canceled too. Um, for me, I, I don't know. I just don't know yet. Uh, and it's going to come to me and it'll come in the next, probably the next couple of weeks uh, and I'll, I'll reassess and I'll, I'll set some goals and then, uh, and then I'll find the right way to attack them. And I hope you guys can find, come to peace with what's going on. Uh, I think you can because you're mentally tough. You're all mentally tough. And remember every day is an ordinary day unless you make it extraordinary. So get after it. Guys.